Hello everybody, I'm Mix Mars and Mar Man, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a sharp lawnmower, which is like a your sharp, your Kazes, your, your Dunham, your, your Honda sort of 553 Pro. I picked this up um, off of, I think it was either eBay or Facebook Marketplace, I can't quite remember. Um, and I paid uh, relatively cheap money for this. I made an offer to a fella, he refused the offer and ended up paying a little bit more uh, about three pounds more on the offer, but they did also throw in a little tiny strimmer trimmer as well for 20 odd quid Which I took which turned out to be a Kawasaki in the end as well and that will run so I'm super super happy about that. but this machine uh, This lawnmower it all starts and uh, cuts and have a bit of a drive does not work So I want to quit looking into that it may be um, the gearbox is gone And if it has it means the rolls got to come apart and this will be the second one I'm gonna try and do the first one was a bit of a fail because I couldn't get the gearbox apart but then, you know, you can't just say, I'm not going to touch them again. You need to keep going and trying to get these things apart to make a, make a, a bit of profit out of these machines. So that's what we're going to do today. So we're doing a gearbox um, refurb, I think is what it is, um, on this machine. And uh, hopefully we can get the, uh, the gearbox and roll it off, get it all separated, and then get the parts um, reinstated inside the gearbox to make it all work. And if it does, I should be quidzing. So I think I only paid about 60 quid for the mower. So it was super, super cheap. Before we get on... Got a little package turned up here. Um, I don't know who it's from. Someone did say in one of my comments they bought me a package off my Amazon wish list, uh, but now I can't find a comment. Um, but someone bought me um, a set of uh, one, two, three, four, five, ten um, primer bulbs uh, for two strokers. So thank you very much indeed. If that was you, leave me a comment in the section below. I'd like to say thank you very much indeed for helping for helping me out. I think I helped you out somewhere on the line, and you just had a little tiny present for me there for my Amazon wish list. So that's cool. Thank you very much indeed for that. Um, so without further ado, let's get down dirty. Let's check out this Sharp 553 Pro uh, long flight type mower and see what it's doing and then hopefully get it onto the bench, get it stripped down in this video. It may be a two part video because I need to order some parts up if it is the clutch. Um, and then we'll go from there. So let's have a look. Right, so uh, let's have a look. So there, there's me, before I get on, there's me, um, my little two-stroker midget. Just done a grass box on it. Yeah, man, it looks cool. That looks really nice. I think I've done a little video on that, I think. It won't be a very big video, just to how to paint a grass box. It's not really everyone's cup of tea, but uh, it looks nice now. So let's leave it out the sunshine, just to bake. So this is the one here, I think this is the one. Uh, 21 inch. Honda, uh, five and a half horse, uh, with rotor clutch and uh, power assisted drive. But as I say, the drive itself is not is not actually working at all. So, got to try and sort that out. Uh, what I have done is I have um, took, took the side cover, this top cover off here, so I can actually see that the, the PTO is actually spinning, um, of which it is. Um, so I know it's not actually just a PTO shaft on it. Just hold it up for you. Don't it as all running apart from the drive. So on the choke. Okay, so we've got it up on the bench. I want to turn the fuel off first. Now, I'm not worried about tipping this machine up on its side because it will be serviced before 
Uh, I go go to you know sort of run up on it, so it all will have to come out. All that sort of stuff will have to come out. So I'm not over over concerned. If you are doing this just yourself and don't want to change it all, you might have to tip the machine up on its side. Just take it all out, okay? Because you are going to tip up onto its side. Over the back here, um, you'll find there's going to be uh, two screws to remove and a selection of bolts. Now, what I will say is is that pretty much what you remove off of one side, you're going to remove off of the other, okay? So if I don't show both sides, it's because uh, it's like for like, okay? So when I'm doing this screw just here, there'll be a screw just the other side as well. So <clears throat> if I don't show it all, it is purely because uh, it mirrors itself, okay? Where there's one bolt one side, there'd be uh, one bolt the other, okay? So get yourself a magnet tray, a Chinese tub, or whatever it is, a wash nut bowl, whatever it is you're going to use to keep all your bits and bobs together. Make sure you've got that because there are quite a few um, spare parts that come off of these machines uh, in relation to um, what you need to take apart. So make sure you've got some kind, of, some kind of system there in place to keep all your bits and bobs. So one screw here to undo, you've got a, looks to be like a, a 10 or 12 here and one here as well. Just want to find the impact. I'll try and impact some of them. And I'm only going gently, okay? You can just use sockets um, if you want to. But this machine looks to be as if um, it's not done a great deal of work. There's a little tiny Phillips down there, actually, Mick. That's not a, that's not a 10 mil. There's a little tiny Phillips down in here somewhere. Okay, so I took the lawnmower up onto its side to actually um, impact that off. because it, it didn't want to come out, that screw just there. It's a JIS, JIS screw, um, it's inside here. Um, it didn't want to come out, but I got it in the end. Um, it wasn't going to beat me. Um, it's a JI screw though. So all the covers, all these bits and pieces, keep them together with the screws already in them. So that way you know where they're going. Okay, so it's all, this is all a question of about cataloging, where the stuff goes, how it comes off, and what have you. Okay, that's the best way to do it. Let me tip this lawnmower back onto its, uh, onto its wheels and roll up. As I say to you um, before in the video, Everything you do here, you'll have to do the same on the other side, okay? Let's bring you on down. Bring you in a smidge. Right. Next thing you want to do is uh, you've got a spring here to remove, and the best way to do that is to make sure that your spring is actually at the least amount of compression on the, on the highest setting, which would be about there, okay? And the spring's quite loose, but you can go out just a little bit further and it will enable you just to remove that spring with relative ease, okay? Just sort of hold it together and do it, do it in one hit. I'm trying to do it one-handed here. Or you can get yourself a pair of, um, I find, fuel hose pliers to be quite good. Just get hold of it underneath and then just prop it up and that come off like that. So that's the spring. That goes into your magnet tray, like so. That's that bit done. Now you've got to remove um, this bolt here, and around the other side will be a 13 mil bolt uh, nut the other side there, it's non-captive. So you need to remove that one there as well um, to, to actually remove this part of the roller. Then you've got to turn it around the other side and do exactly the same on the other side before uh, we're anywhere close to getting this gearbox out. But there's a few bits we'll undo yet, but undo that one next, um, and then hopefully uh, we can get the other side done, and then we'll move on to the next step. So I have removed a nut off of the back of here um, and it is spinning quite freely. Just make a note of which way around your height control lever goes. And then we can start to now remove this one here. Now it is threaded uh, a considerable way, but it, it's not threaded all the way. It's got a sleeve on it. Let's just start to remove that one out. You've got one on the other side to do as well, don't forget. As I say, everything mirrors everything on here. Starting to come out. Yeah, I'm starting to give it a secret up. It might drop a little bit. So that one there goes onto there. Now what you can do here is you leave that leave that high control in for now, but that will come off in a bit. So just make a note of where that goes. That can go into your magnet tray. Get rid of your 13 mil for now, but you want that back in a minute because uh, we're going to be doing the other side. So let me get the lawnmower spun round the other way. And then um, we can start to work on the other side, which will be mirror imaging uh, this one here. Right, we're in around the other side of the machine. So now we can now undo this screw here, which is exactly the same as one we've done before. Nothing different going on here, people, nothing to see. Um, you've got one screw here and one screw down the other side. 
Let's unwind that one. Get that one out. Now I have, as I say, I have checked the PTO on this to see if um, it uh, wasn't actually driving, but it is driving. Does that one come out? Yeah, yeah, it's coming. The reason this screw is quite hard to get out is because um, it's left open to the elements. Yeah, it's coming out. The problem is when you get ones that use commercially, um, stuff tends stuff tends to snap on them because you know they have been left out, not left outside, but outside all the elements and what have you. So a, a ten mil up here to remove as well. I'm just going gently. I'm not going hell for leather. I don't want nothing to break. But I have got a few spare parts off of uh, another machine which my friend Gabriel gave me. Um, but either way, I just don't want, don't want to have to break anything. All this will be cleaned out later on. So we've got another uh, 13 mil um, bolt nut on the inside here to remove. And then you've got the big one here. So get your spanner, go up underneath and locate your 13 mil, which is just the other side of here. You can get in there, it'll be somewhere about there. And then grab the 17. Make sure you're on. No, it's on or not. The space is a little bit limited. I can get an open end in there any better. Okay, I can't go up. I'll try it about there, see what happens there. See if, that, see if that likes it. I think that's better. And you've got that one there to remove. Just double checking around the back here, it has actually got it, it's not actually spinning. No, I can feel, feel the bolt going. Now I'm hoping to get this gearbox and roller apart. The reason I chose this one is because it's been um, privately owned. So I'm hoping it's not, you know, it's not showing any signs of a rust that the others, the others have shown. All right, that's my 13 mil nut now out. Here it is. <coughs> we can now get on and do, do this bolt. Now the Honda ones may differ, okay, but not by not by a great deal, not by a massive amount. Um, the cases are pretty much the same. So are the lawn flights and what have you, they're all much the same. So you now you just notice that that um, gearbox actually just uh, rolls just actually dropped down, okay? There's nothing retaining it anymore. Well, that bolt goes into there. Now you can sort of spin them uh, back around the other way and um, start to uh, disengage the, uh, the drive system and uh, the gearbox. Okay, so now the next thing to do would be to remove uh, some of this hardware here. Now what I recommend you do is, let me get right in here, um, there's a little tiny, um, like a circlip split pin style washer just here, okay? Uh, I'd, I'd recommend removing that one and leaving this one be, okay? I've done previous machines and I took that one off, but uh, if you take that one off, uh, that, that then will slide out with relative ease. You may still have to remove uh, this little C-clip here as well, just so you can remove this bracket if required. Okay, guys, let me get that done. Uh, just want just to show you where I'm going with it. Let's put you back on your perch, bring you up here. Uh, on a decent, sharp, flat-headed drive. It's going to go down and where I show you. There should be a split pin in there too. There's not actually a split pin on here. There should be. I'm going to get in between where I said I was. There's a little tiny star clip just there. Just going to try and open that up. It's going to be easier said than done. Because someone's put it all the way on. Cool, have they? I might have to go the other side of it and. Uh, do that. That, that might even want cutting off. Oh, that's right on there, that is. Oh, she's starting to move now. Yeah, there should be a little tiny split pin in there as well. 
just to help hold all that on. But it's missing. Right, let's get a pair of long nose pliers on it now. Or a pair of pliers, one or the other, just so I can get hold of it and remove it. There it goes. So just, just a little tiny um, star clip on there to hold that. Now you might be able to just get hold of that and move it off, but if it don't, then you might have to remove this other star clip as well. Well, I just showed you, oh, it's getting warm in the shed. It's supposed to be the hottest week this week. Little C clip here. Just gonna remove that. A slightly smaller screwdriver, Mick. Mine's a bit finer on the end. That'd be good. That one there, that's pretty good. So again, all we're doing is just, just gonna be removing and cataloging where it all goes. Mind your eyeballs. They just have a tendency just to jump off and bite you. Ask Conker. He'll tell you all about C-clips. He loves them. That's quite a sharp old screwdriver that is, Mick. And he stabbed himself. Yeah. Right, there goes the C-clip. You've got a C-clip, and then you've got a little tiny washer that goes on top of that. And we'll keep all these bits together, guys, like I said. That will then remove, and then come off of that bracket at the back. And it goes on like that. So it always goes on washer first at the front, C clip there, and then on the back side should be another another sur clip with a split pin. Okay, guys, that goes into there. So that's the gearbox pretty much um, loosened up now. We can tip the machine either onto its side or uh, preferably you want it up in the air so that the uh, the roller can be removed. But first thing we've got to do, we've got to remove the uh, the drive cable at the back. Okay, as I tip the uh, lawnmower up onto its side, the gearbox has now come loose from the PTO shaft. So there's a PTO shaft that's here. That's come a bit loose. I'm gonna try and just bring it around a touch, if I can, and bring you guys around this side here. And I'll show you how to remove the uh, the actual drive cable itself. Sorry for the jiggleness, but I wanna get you into, you're, you're, you're right in front of me on the old GoPro. Okay. So what you can do here to make things easier for yourself is actually just remove these two bolts here um, on the gearbox itself to give it a bit more slack, okay? Uh, what you can also do is remove uh, your drive cable off of the top end of a lawnmower, uh, just disconnect it. That will give you a bit more slack as well, okay, if you can't get that off. But all we're looking to do is just literally just get hold of this and just, just manipulate this, um, this cable out. What I'm gonna do for mine is I'm gonna remove that bracket off the top of the gearbox, okay? That will give me a bit more slack. So gently, gently, one there. And one there. See how much slack that's now given me? And then you can literally then manipulate your, your cable out of its housing, swing it around. That will be a bit stuck in there to a degree. There it goes, right. So now you can just manipulate it out of its little home. I've got over the top, like so. Oh, just bash your old camera. And then slide that one out of there, like so. Oh, this is the, uh, the issue when you're working in close proximity of a GoPro. There you go, right. Cable now removed, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put that uh, back on, just so we don't lose it. It may have to come back off a bit later on, but I'm trying to do it just so I can show your orientation and stuff um, going forward, otherwise, we, otherwise we, all, we all forget, right? So you can see there's a little tiny plate mark on there. It definitely goes that way. Of course, she's heating up in the old shed today. Put your fan on in a minute. Right, so that should be, to my recollection, the gearbox and roller now able to come out. You can take the PTO shaft out, that just, that just comes out anyway, okay guys? Uh, right, let's put this gearbox and roller down to one side for a minute. Ooh, I wanna get now the lawnmower out the way. Um, put it outside, because we're done with this now for a little while. The, the main attention is actually gonna be on the roller itself, so. Let me get the lawnmower out of the way. I'll be back to you in two seconds. Right, roller gearbox now um, on the table. Get rid of these big sockets, I don't need them no more. 
I can go for a Burton. Um, there's that about 13 on there, Mick. Okay, so this should be a little bolt in here, which will separate your, start to separate your um, core. Oh. Now, if that snaps, people, we're going to be for it. I'm not even joking. Cool, baby. It's got to come out because uh, this side is sealed and this side is not. So as always, you need to be a bit careful because if, you, if you're just going hammer and tong, right, they're going to snap on you. Now I have got a spare one of these, but um, it, ain't worth a, it ain't worth a risk. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, um, what was that, a 13, wasn't it? I'm going to get 13 on, a, on an impact ready. Get rid of that really, really silly long extension bar. Don't need that anymore. I'm gonna go for a short reach one. That one there. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna heat this up um, before I even consider touching it, because it, you know, it's gonna be um, a, bit, a bit stiff. So heat that up. Without setting fire to your table, and then I'm gonna try and impact it off. It don't want it, baby. Watch me snap this. It's going. Tighten it back up. Loosen it. Oh. It does not want it, baby. Penetration loop. Try and draw in some of that goodness. I might put the half inch on it. The chances are I put the half inch on that, it really ain't gonna like it. But these are the problems we face as a lawnmower repair specialist technician. That's gotta come out, whether it likes it or not. Has it snapped? No, <laughs> we got it. Good, it's a bit, a bit warm up. Well, don't touch it, Mick. Don't touch it, Mick. It's a bit warm. Put it on one side. So we're happy with that. So now, uh, this, this part of the collar will come off. Let me get a little tiny, little tiny hammer with that. I think my soft blow hammer's actually in the, in the house. That one comes off of there. <clears throat> now put these around, put these around, so you know which way they go. That's the way it came off, people. So you want the lugs on the inside, okay? And the height control goes on the short part of the roller, okay? Just so you don't forget when you pull back together. So height control, short roller, lugs on the inside. Easy as that. Now you can throw it down to, to, to one side because you can forget all about it now. Now, the question is, is this gonna separate up for me or not? Now, this is where the problem lies. The problem lies trying to remove uh, these brackets from uh, said rollers. Now, just a quick note, on the inside of here, there, sh there, there normally is a little tiny washer and a, um, uh, a friction washer in there. Now, there is one on this side here. I can see there is. In fact, there's two, possibly two. So it may be that this was actually been taken apart beforehand, okay? Possibly. But you can see that that actually will not turn that roller. It's stuck there, so the, the, the clutch is actually broke. That's where it was. It's now starting to turn it now, but uh, I believe it to be a, to be Poontang knackered, so. Um, We've got to try and now remove uh, this, this shaft off of here, and that can be done by hitting um, this top shaft here. That does feel quite loose, Mick. It feels like it wants it to come off, but these have got to be separated, guys, and that's no easy thing. That's got to be punched out to enable, oh look, oh look, oh look, we've got space. 
Oh, we've got space already. So once this rod comes out of here, you, you, you may find that, um, once it comes off that bearing, you may find that actually that's gonna come off. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get hold of that nut and bolt. I don't wanna damage those threads on the end of here. Ooh, I'm gonna put that into there. I don't damage them old, them old threads. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna take that, take that little uh, washer off, just so I can just give that a bit of a tap. To get it to go through the bearing. So I think it, it now is, the little one's come off, lovely. So notice here there's no, uh, on some of the Hondas, you actually get a, a, a circlip here, okay, on these ones, on these cases, they're not. There's a circle up the top end here, okay, um, but uh, not not on the other side. So now that's through there. What I want to do now, I want to, whoop, I want to try and remove it from this side here. If it had come, it, it will it will want a bit of bashing, but hopefully with the bashing, uh, it will release this roller here. I'm gonna put the nut, the bolt back in so don't damage the threads, like I said. I want that now to move that way. Now, trust me, these don't often come apart this easy, okay? Trust me. And what I do know is, is that someone has definitely been in before because they've doubled up the, uh, the thrush washers on this end. So someone has definitely been in. There should be two washers and thrush washers this end and two the other end. So I know for a fact the fiddle fairies have been in. I'll take this shaft all the way out now. Man, this shaft's in good condition too. Oh, come on, baby. Give it me. Come on. You can't hang on to the last piece. Out you come. Boing, All right, there goes the shaft. So now the shaft is now out. The question is, will the, um, the long roller now come off? That's the question. We shall see. Let's um, bring it round here. We've got a bit of a gap. That's good news. That is really good news. Oh my Lord, it fell off in the end. Look at that. Now that doesn't happen very often at all. Normally what you have to do is where the, the shaft goes on like so, what you have to normally is get a piece of wood in here and bash that living daylights out of it. But that's actually come off really, really well. And I'm super happy. This is why I went for this machine because, I, because a bloke said he's had it from new. So it's not done that, that amount of work. If it had been commercially used, I would have thought twice. Uh, unless you looked after it yourself before. All sorts look good. Roller bearings look really good inside there as well. They're gonna be greased up. Yep, they're all in place and intact, that's good. So now what I wanna do is start to separate the gearbox up. I'm gonna now remove this bracket off of here. Now the, to, to repair this actual drive issue on this machine is gonna be around about 40 quid, just for the part, okay? But um, you've got to get the roller and all the stuff off first, as I say. Uh, and and that, that's where the problem lays, is that you've got to remove all the bits and bobs. So that's that bit off, we're happy with that. Now I'm nearly 110% convinced this actually wasn't a problem with, um, with the output itself, because it was actually outputting. Um, I don't think it was an engine failure, I think it was actually definitely a gearbox. So, but we'll be able to tell once we get this apart and have a look at the um, have a look at the dog clutch inside. So next we've got to do is we've got to remove, uh, we've got to remove one, two, here, these two, one, two here. They may be a bit of a pickle because they look like they've been on a little while. So clean them right up. And then you've got to then remove one, two, three, four, five. Once them five are removed, um, we have to remove the circlips off of here as well. Um, and then that will then allow us to tap through this shaft here uh, to split this gearbox in half, okay? So let me get it cleaned up and I'll come back to you in two ticks. Okie dokie, so um, very, you have got an all drain plug on the back of these. Some you have, some you haven't. And it does give you the option to actually fill, fill your oil up if you've got a bit of a leak or what have you. 
um, going forward. So just, just undo that one, tip it up onto its nose. You can then remove that and hopefully you'll get all come out of it. Mm, it's a bit gray looking. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit gray looking. So because of a gray, the gray color is actually a good thing for me. That actually tells me um, I have actually maybe diagnosed it correct because the gears have been grinding. So that would be the clutch in here. Okay, and you don't want a lot for the drive to stop. Literally, it only wants to be um, the corners of a clutch um, rounded off and the drive won't work, okay? So now I'm gonna change over just to a 10 mil uh, small socket because you don't, this, this is now the time, guys, that you don't want nothing to snap on you, okay? Because you've got, you've got an all this way and now what you don't want is, the, uh, is anything to snap on you in regards to um, uh, the gearbox casing itself, obviously it means drilling and tapping, okay? If you're not sure, right, guys, then um, back off and uh, heat it up, put it in a vise, and take your time. Now, I'm just using a little tiny, tiny ratchet, so I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this, but these four already have come off. They're all doing really well. These ones here are gonna be a different story because these ones here are gonna be the ones that actually um, are exposed to the elements. So these may require a little bit of heating. Now that's actually a nut on the back side of that. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to two 10 mil spanners, ring spanners. Instead of mucking about with, uh, with ratchets, I'm gonna go to 10 mil ring spanners. I'm gonna try and undo um, these by hand if I can. just because it'd be easier to undo, undo the nut rather than the bolt itself. I might have to put in a vise to do it. In fact, I think I'm gonna. But you can see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna try and try and manipulate these so that I can get these off. But you know, as you can see, they're, uh, they're well and truly rusted on there, but they've got to come off. Now the advantage is if these actually snap, you can just put two bolts in. These are the ones you don't want to snap, okay? Better ones you want off. But so let me get these undone. I'll come back to you in two ticks. Okay, so those actually have come off a lot easier than what I thought they'd come off. They were not putting up much resistance, but you know, they are hanging on to the death. Um, so I'm just gonna try and run these out now. In fact, I can probably risk it for a biscuit and put a socket on me now. that one little tiny washer and that's for nut to that. I'll give I'll give them all a good clean anyway. I got one here and that one was moving a minute ago in the voice. It's got to go a bit easy with them. Just, it's only remaining these back ones. The other ones normally aren't too bad. Alright come on you because you were you were moving a minute ago in the old vice. Oh, it goes. oh that's hanging on. Right, I'm going to change over to my impact now because I know that's, that's definitely moving. But it's got a bit, of, a bit of resistance there. I'm not going mad. There it goes. That's that one out. So put all your bits and bobs together. The two bolts are the ones that go through the shield. That shield can now just tap off. Now, normally these of the shields will actually wear out because they collect all the dust in them, but that's the main reason why I went for this mower. This wasn't worn. That's quite a good looking, uh, good looking bracket, that is. I'm gonna get a bit more of a clean up because now I wanna start to um, separate this gearbox. It's not essential at the moment, but I uh, just literally wanna make sure we're uh, clean as we go. So now we know these all move. There's no bolt, there's no nuts on the back of these. And we can now just run these off. Cool beans, so all the same length. There's nothing different with those at all. And that's good. 
Now we'll have to move these circlips in a bit because I want to I lift this up through, through this casing. Just gonna try and separate it up a little tiny bit if I can just, just to get it to move. But uh, once, this, once these circlips have come out, then uh, we better separate the entire gearbox itself. So I'm just gonna remove this circlip here off the top. Uh, circlip pliers over there. And I want a set of expanders, which would be that set there, I think. Go into there, into there, get a nice, nice, nice fit. Lift that one up. I will remove the other one as well, just for uh, argument's sake, in case I can't get it to go out that way. Now, with a bit of tapping, I can now tap this, uh, tap this through. There's still a bit of gunk on there, so I need a bit, a, bit, a bit more clean up going on. Let me get cleaned up and I'll come back to you in two ticks. Okay, been cleaned up. I'm gonna put this into a vise now, and all I'm gonna do is just gonna rest this on top of the vise and bash this down through so I can then separate this, this top part of this, um, this gearbox. You can see it's starting to go, but this has got to slide up, okay? So the best thing to do, rather than put a screwdriver in here, because it's only aluminium, is to put in the vise and bash this piece down. So let me get that done, and I'll be back to you as soon as I've done it. Right, so I have to now manage to start to separate. So a bit of a tap on the top there. You don't have to go mad, right? But all you're looking to do is just sort of break the seal, so to speak. Now these are held on with like a little tiny, uh, like a carburetor, a big bowl ring, effectively. And all you're looking to do is just to separate the two bodies of this gearbox. Now, they're held together by pins here as well, which don't make it any easier. You look, what you're going to do is looking for, for this to slide up over the top of, um, of this cog here. So you have to go just a bit careful. You know, you, you, you can't just go wailing on it with a hammer because you, you're, you're going to break the gearbox casing. But once you've got, got it sort of half separated, you can just sort of give it a few gentle taps and it will start to come up. So it's starting to move. Just take your time with it. But we can see we're already starting to expose it. You don't want to be prying anywhere really. Just, just, you know, just little tiny lifts. You want this to roll up over top of this cam here. So more and more cleaning to try and get all the dirt and muck out of through the oil seal. You can remove the oil seal if you want to. I'm trying to keep my oil seal if I can. But it is starting to go. You see what I'm doing? So just uh, tap away, tap away, tap away, tap away until you can actually separate that up. And I'll come back to you once I've done it. But it's going to take me five or ten minutes. So rather than you just sitting and watch me just, just tapping it, I'll come back to you once I've actually got it, got it separated. Okie dokie. So with that now, um, the top plate now tail off. a little tiny washer on here, a little tiny like, like a thrush washer. Just hold on here if I can get hold of it. I want to be able to get hold of it as it is. My hands are a bit, a bit skinny. A little tiny thrush washer just dropped drop down into there. Let me pull that out. There it is. A little tiny washer. That goes up on top. Now you're going to struggle to get, the, get these cogs out. Some just fall out, some don't, right? You've got to sort of lift it up. That's on a keyway, this one here. You've got to try and just separate it by pulling it up. It will go. It's a bit just jigger poke. There's, there's your dog clutch. You can see it behind there. There's your dog clutch. It's underneath it. That's a bit we're trying to get at. I think that actual that actual clutch fork is actually worn. Actually, it's a bit worn. Um, so just just manipulate it to try and get it to come out. There it goes. Once that comes out, you can then remove your chain off of your your main cog. That all comes off. There goes your chain. Now, in here, there'll be a washer right underneath this cog here. So what I recommend you do is lift your, lift your clutch up and take your clutch out, okay? And then put this cog back in there again. You might, I might have already missed the opportunity. No, it's gone in. Uh, there's a little tiny washer in there underneath this main cog. If you put that back into there like that, it, it's not gonna move nowhere, okay? And this will be our issue. Uh, just remember which way up it goes. It goes with the teeth facing downwards. Give it a bit of a clean. And what I'm expecting to see will be um, some wear on the edges of the clutch. That's what I'm expecting to see. Okay, if it got wear on the clutch, then that would be your issue. Okay, guarantee it. Let's have a little look, Skeet. Look at that. 
So you can see all the, all, all the top shine areas. It's a big step there, look. So these are all the areas that your clutch is actually worn. And what happens is your clutch just can't bite on there. There's not a lot to take off, really, to be fair. You know, it's not a lot of material. Um, but that is why this drive isn't working. And that part there, that's around about, I don't know, 35 quid. Just remember, you'll have to order a splined one. It may, help, it may pay you to count the splines, so you know exactly what one you're ordering. But I'm gonna try and find this bit of kit now online, and I'll show you what bit of kit I'm gonna order. Right, guys, so um, I've had a little tiny look into here, um, and it's not just the dog clutch that's actually um, knackered, uh, as you can see there, but actually the clutch fork, um, on here is actually worn as well. There's nothing biting on this side. Should be a tiny prong just here. And on this side here, you can see how thin that is. See that? So I also need a new clutch fork as well. So I've got to take the clutch fork out and then order a new clutch fork and also order a new clutch. Uh, that's why the clutch wasn't working because obviously when it went into, into its place, into its little tiny home of which it lives, uh, that part of the clutch here wasn't, wasn't lifting it up, you see? So that'd be the reason why she died. So um, let me get the parts ordered up. I'll show you where I've ordered them from. I'll be back to you in two takes of a cat's whisker. Right guys, so um, I have now removed the clutch fork out of the um, out of the gearbox itself. That just sits in a little tiny recess in the hole just in there. All right, let me get that in there. Boom. And then you've got a little tiny, um, this is where your cable goes. Uh, this one goes around this way. That then sits into there. Now all you want to do before you remove this uh, off of it is actually just make a few markings. So what I did, I decided to have it all the way in and all the way back. Okay, and I tip it over and I've got two little tiny markings on here. One on the casing, just there, and then one just here on the arm. And all I'm gonna do is just gonna marry them two up roughly, be about there, bang on. Um, and that's that's where you know your, uh, your clutch goes in future. So just don't disturb it too much. So my clutch fork itself is absolutely knackered because um, you can see here on, on this end, let me turn that light on so you might get a bit, bit of a better view on it. Um, so on here, you can see I've got a little tiny nibble it, but look how thin it is, look, it's worn away. And then that bit there should be as long as that side there also, so it should have a, a bit inside, so my clutch fork's actually gone as well. So I have diagnosed the machine right, it wasn't just a clutch, it was actually the clutch fork as well. So that's that, now's a good time, with a clutch fork taken out, you can now remove the main cog Underneath there, there'd be a little tiny washer, and that washer has to go on the bottom. Now, if it doesn't go on the bottom, uh, what will happen is if you put that back in there without it, that will just wear away at the casing, okay? So you need to make sure that when you put it back together, uh, that little washer sits on there like so, and then that cog then goes back in there like that. You've got to line it all up and what have you, make sure it's all right, so when you put your, your gearing back together, it all sits perpendicular. But now's a good time, uh, whilst we're going to order the parts up, uh, to sit and wait, uh, give us a good clean, the pinion gear looks to be okay, not a lot wrong with that. There's a few little sharp edges on there, but I'll see how much a new one is, but um, that doesn't look too bad. The main gear itself looks to be okay. So that just sit in a little tiny petrol bath for now, um, with all the components so I, don't, so I don't lose anything which actually goes inside. Uh, all the main gearing as well, that can all fit inside a petrol bath, even the chain as well. Uh, the clutch can go in just for now, so I keep an eye on it, and my, and my clutch fork. So all that's gonna sit in a petrol bath just to clean itself up. And I'm just gonna spray this up, clean it up, look, big lump of something just there, look, see that big lump of something, look, big lump of, uh, that's actually, a, I thought it was a roller bearing, it's not, no, it's actually a bit, a bit of clutch fork, I expect. So all that's gotta come out, uh, all that bit of debris. So plenty of cleaning going on, lots of that sort of stuff, uh, petrol bath it, and um, get all the, all the stuff nice and clean, and then I'll order the parts up, and then that'll be part two uh, coming up. So keep an eye out for part two and how to put it all back together and I shall find out where the parts are and list that either in this video or the next. Right, so there you have the, um, the Sarp um, gearbox now, all been stripped down, taken apart. I have ordered some new parts for that. Um, I've ordered a new clutch fork, new clutch, and a new main gear and pinion gear, uh, only because the pinion gear looked a little bit chewed up. Um, so I thought, for what it is, I think I can get everything for about 90 quid, 94 quid, something like that. Um, I'm not 100% certain if the, Honda genuine part ones do fit these, but they look very, very similar. Uh, the problem is, is the cost of uh, purchasing a genuine Honda part um, versus the Kaz ones, there is a big price difference. I think a, a dog clutch from LNS Engineering was around about 50 quid, and a dog clutch direct from uh, Kaz manufacturer was 25 pounds, so it's, that's half price. 
Uh, however, I have bought a new dog clutch, a new pinion gear, main gear, and a new uh, clutch fork for about 95 quid. Uh, this, here is the pricing now of the dog clutch, there you go, for your information. And here is the pricing for the uh, clutch fork, that was quite cheap. And also I ordered up the pinion gear and the main gear as well to go on, on there as well. So, so this, um, this gearbox will pretty much completely revamped with regards to the gearing. And I'm also going to use, um, not going to use SEA 30 oil in there, I'm going to use an EPA 90, like a, like a gear oil. Um, I used to work on outboard engines and what have you. Uh, the, uh, the gearing is very, very similar on an outboard leg uh, of, a dog, of a dog clutch and what have you. Very similar indeed. And we used to use EP, EP 90, I'm going to use EP 90 on mine. I know that Mendit Man does use like a grease, but I have looked for grease. You can't get it no more by the looks of it, it's, uh, it's now been discontinued. So I'm going to go for a slightly thicker compound grease, which is designed for gear oil. Uh, for gears, and uh, I'm using S, um, uh, EP90 gear all on mine. Um, with regards to the bearings and rollers, these bearings, they don't feel brilliant. There's a little tiny bit of drag on them, um, and you, I can feel it's catching. So I'm doing a quick little video in a bit on how to remove those. Um, so I have brand new bearings on there as well. The roller bearings inside the gearbox are okay. They're not too bad at all. And so we should be golden. By the time you guys can see the next video on, uh, on this one here, um, we'll be having all the spare parts will be in, and it'll have new bearings, new gears, um, new dog clutch and what have you, all going back in, and we'll put the, um, the gearbox all back together. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, when we go to fire up, the drive will be absolutely brilliant, nice and strong. Um, and as I say, this machine was bought brand new by the gentleman, I believe, and um, it's only been used privately, which is a massive thing. If these are used commercially, then they do get a, bit, a few hours on the old clock. This is a 2005 model, not that old. Uh, but if it's only been used on, on a private property, then it's only been used every other fortnight. So we, we should be uh, good to go with regards to the engine there. So super, super cool. If you like sort of video, Mix Mo's and Merman, hit the subscribe button and whack the old bell. Set notifications to all. Well, you'll be told next time I upload another video. Don't forget to check out part two, which will be putting it all back together. So keep an eye out for that. We'll try and list it as part one and part two if I remember. And then we'll go from there. So I look forward to the next episode of Mix Mo's very, very soon. But until then, don't forget, much more importantly, take her easy.